Unfortunately, only a handful of daytime dramas remain in production, but one that set the standard for all others, CBS's Guiding Light. Millions tuned in daily <laughs> to see the Bauer, Spaulding, Lewis, and Cooper families face life and love amid the greatest of challenges. Oh, yeah. Brace yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Look who we have here in Historic Studio D, Guiding Lights, Michael O'Leary and Grant Alexander, also known, I mean, to the Guiding Light. I mean, we've been talking about this. They're the Guiding Light guys. Right. Rick Bauer, you yep. played for several years, and yep. you played Philip Spaulding. Welcome. Thank yeah, we, you. We answer to anything. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about why you're here on Delmar. Of, uh, coming up but first um, let's just talk about um, what it was like being on the longest running TV drama in history I mean that had to be well, something I, I, I want to share a quick story with you I started in 1983 uh, May of 83 and as we were talking about this I, I started as an orderly on a Friday and on Monday I was doing brain surgery <laughs> <laughs> so hence the 42 dead patients later <laughs> um, but it was a it was a blessing, and I, and you know, like Shreda Bauer, you know, uh, played Burt Bauer, who mm -hmm. started this whole thing back in 1930s uh, on radio. I got a chance to work with her. My first one of my first days on the set, we we're shooting a location in Pennsylvania, and she said, I saw her in this church, and I was nervous, and she she said, Michael, come over here, and she says, you're a Bauer, and as far as I'm concerned, you're my grandson, and I'm going to take good care of you. And if you have any questions, just oh come to me. Goodness. That's awesome. That was one of my first days on the set. So that kind of encapsulizes, I think the feeling that we have with our show it's it's fa it really was family yeah. yes yeah. wow we, do you run into people that feel like they know you oh god like yes family yeah. Yeah. and they do and part of it is because you know you came into their home 5 days a week 52 weeks a year so just from uh, a time standpoint they've spent so much time with you and to play these characters you have to put a lot of yourself into it so they feel like they know you and in a way they sort of do because a lot of your innate characteristics bleed into the character and they love it when they see that it's like yeah. when Mikey and I are out because we are pals and we played pals on the show they'll see us relating to each other the way Philip and Rick did and they just sit there and they just <laughs> 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 and it's, and that's fun for us yeah yeah, yeah. Cool. and you guys it started relatively I mean close um, months apart from yeah, right. started. Yeah. So how did you get started Michael well I um, it's a good question I you know I was, I was an usher on the price is right that's when I I kind of uh, started looking into being an actor and I started mm -hmm. doing commercials and some really really bad movies yeah um, and then I uh, went into audition for the guiding light and they said there was no Rick there was no part there for uh, available for me I got a chance to screen test uh, uh, Betty Ray God rest her soul this wonderful casting director said yeah well, just read with these ten actresses and they, I, I really had nothing on the line. So I auditioned with these 10 actresses. Um, I went home, got my 500 bucks. Three days later, I got a call, and they told me I was replacing the Rick Bauer that was on the show. Ah. So that's how it happened for me. Wow. Yeah. Grant, Philip Spaulding, how'd that happen? I went in with uh, a million other guys for a casting call for this particular role, and uh, I was at the right place at the right time. I think uh, part of the reason that I was lucky enough to get the role is that I looked a bit like the man who was Philip's biological father on the show. Mm -hmm. okay. This big strapping guy named Tom O'Rourke who was an old MP, kind of like a bogey type. He was, Tom was fantastic. We lost him way too young. Um, but uh, that was the story that I came on with was a, a, a off done soap story of raised by one man but the uh, actually the biological child of another mm -hmm. and I looked a, a lot like I could have been Tom's son wow. um, so yeah I mean there's always a lot of luck involved yeah and, uh, okay. and we both got lucky and you're actually from the Baltimore area I am from I grew Baltimore. up in Timonium and um, you know one of the hardest things I had to do was listen to my mother tell me you know you got to get rid of that Baltimore <laughs> accent <laughs> Uh, and uh, so every time that I would, I'd be down in Baltimore and I'd be, you know, with friends and stuff and then go back and be taping some shows. And my mom, of course, always watched. She said, uh, Grant, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm hearing the O. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm. So you guys mentioned that you played best friends right. on the show. Right. And you're best friends in, in well, you know, yeah. you pal around right. in real life. Yeah. We're best friends. Oh, uh, okay. I, I look at Grant, uh, you know, uh, uh, when I started the show, you know, I was replacing a, a friend of his on the mm. show, but uh, Grant took me under his wing. He had more experience in the business than I, I did. 
and uh, we were best friends from really from almost from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was all prepared to really not like him coming in because <laughs> he was. He was replacing, replacing a, friend. a friend who is still a, a dear friend and yeah. a friend of Mikey's as well, um, who's fabulously successful doing something else now. But, um, but yeah, I was sort of, I had a little bit of a chip on my shoulder, which lasted about three seconds because anybody that meets <laughs> Mikey, you know, it's My Mikey thaw an iceberg. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I got that. Okay. So, so where are you now? What are you doing now? A little bit of everything. Uh, Mikey, you want to? Well, yeah, I've um, um, I, I've always dabbled in uh, being a playwright, and um, I, I wrote a play back in 2006. It sat on my computer for 10 years, and and a friend of mine said, "Let's get that computer, yeah, let's get that uh, play out of the computer." We did a little reading of it, and um, and it led to this other play that I wrote um, uh, called "Breathing Under Dirt." And so I've been spending. Uh, that's what I do. I get up every morning at 5:30 and I do some writing. And that's wow. really my first love, really. It's, mm. um, um, and, gr and I've been blessed enough to have Grant uh, direct it and, and star in it, too. So um, the wonderful thing about what we did is uh, once I've decided I want to do this play, I called Grant and Tina Sloan and Beth Chamberlain, all from The Guiding mm -hmm. Light, and I said, guys, can you help me out? And they didn't hesitate. That's um, awesome. And we, we went up in, uh, in New York, and we presented it in New York. We won first place at the One Act Festival at the Manhattan Repertory. Congratulations. Thank you. Wow. And that kind of led us to where we are today, which mm -hmm. is um, uh, doing the play at uh, the beautiful Princess Anne, in Princess Anne, Maryland, mm -hmm. Dale Fitzgerald Theater, uh, yeah. August uh, 12th and 13th. Yeah, so that's why you're here. Yes. You're actually, uh, the play is coming up. Tell us mm -hmm. a little bit about it. Um, Breathing Under Dirt uh, came about for me, um, I, I kind of, I, I had some lifelong resentments toward my father, uh, who, you know, was, uh, uh, for lack of a better way of saying, just an abusive alcoholic. Um, and I held that resentment for years and years, and so I, I recognized that, um, you know, he passed from leukemia uh, 15 years ago, and even though we kind of reconciled a little bit, it was something that I had to deal with. Mm -hmm. and, and so putting pen to paper, and, and flushing that out, for me, was part of this healing process. So the play really is about forgiveness and reconciliation, and I think that's a topic that we all can sort of, yep. uh, you know, I think everybody here has the resentment they probably have towards somebody, and that's what the play is about. It's about this journey about this uh, mother and daughter in the 1950s, and their journey toward reconciling those resentments toward each other. All right, and you can see it right here on uh, Delmarva, Breathing Under Dirt. It's August 13th from uh, 2 p.m. and a 7 p.m. show, also on August 14th at 2 p.m. at the Ella Fitzgerald Performing Arts Center. If you want some more information, 443-614-0830. And there's also a actor's workshop with Michael O'Leary. That right. is exciting, August 14th from 10.30 a.m. to noon, also at the Ella Fitzgerald Performing Arts Center at UMES. Yep. Guys, so nice to have you here. Thank of you course. So Thank you very much for having Appreciate us. Thank Appreciate you. It. We're not letting you go. Oh, okay. No. Just wanted to come. <laughs> 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 You're staying here.